And there they go. Welcome back to RacingNews.com. I'm Magic, and a field of eight older Calbred Geldings will go a mile and eighth on the turf course at Santa Anita in Saturday's Race 6 at the Great Race Place. That's a $200,000 turf classic stakes on Cal Cup Day. It's all Calbreds in all the stakes action. With me to talk about this race is Mike Samich. Mike, first off, we got a mandatory pick six payout at Santa Anita. This is the second leg. It's very crucial if you're trying to take down that pick six that you've got to get this race correct because it is an earlier leg here. Uh, with a, this field, of eight of them, it's kind of hard to pick a standout here. Where'd you go on top? Yeah, this is tough. Um, we're going through that day, you know, like you said, because of that mandatory pick six payout, I'm definitely playing at Santa Anita on Saturday. This was, I thought, one of the toughest races in the sequence, and it's it's because you've got a lot of evenly matched horses, and sometimes in these Calbred races, you have horses that are coming from all different condition levels, and that's exactly what we have here. We have one horse coming out of graded stakes, a couple coming out of California races. We have another horse where Pratt's riding, taking a huge step up, um, but probably has a legit shot in this field. Um, the distance at a mile and eighth, a little interesting for a lot of these horses. Uh, Indian Peak, your morning line three to one favorite all the way on the outside. Uh, last saw him winning at six and a half furlongs on this state bred circuit. So a uh, really different scenario from all, all aspects of this. you got a lot of horses trying something new, doing something new. For me, I'm going to go on the rail. I'm going to take a little bit of a shot here. I do like the eight Indian peak, but I'm going to go with the one whooping J six to one for George Papaduomo. Uh One of those spots where you can kind of see this horse has been claimed twice before these state bred stakes. Clearly, good barns think they have a legit shot in this spot. So got claimed from Doug O'Neill to Mark Glatt. Runs in $100,000 California state bread stakes. If you watch that California flag back, six and a half on the turf. A lot of trouble for Whooping Jay. Um, didn't really get going. Had to let three or four horses pass him. A couple horses got first run on him. And it, it cost him a better placing. So I think he actually ran better than that fourth place spot. This race is also lacking speed. And I feel like you're going to get to see a very, very nice trip here out of Whooping Jay with Joe Bravo up. Uh, only two horses really possess any speed. He's one of the two of them. I think it's going to be tough to catch him if he's able to get first run on this field. So I'm going to go with a little bit of a price. Take the inside horse, Whooping Jay, at 6-1. to one. So with that being your top pick, and you did reference the eight horse all the way on the outside, uh, Indian Peak, your 3-1 to one morning line favorite. Uh, Ruben Alvarado, former trainer, uh, former assistant for trainer Peter Miller, has taken over most of Miller's horses and really thinks it possibly gotten better you see that uh currently 27 percent on the turf for alvarado i don't think miller was ever that high uh, on the turf so clearly there's no fallout there and you've got john velasquez picking the mount up here did you at least use his horse underneath in an exotic and will he be in your pick six ticket i mean he will be in my pick six ticket i'm definitely not singling here yeah i'm not sure what they got in the coffee over that in that alvarado barn but whatever it is it might be even better than the miller barn's coffee uh pretty amazing to see him start out 26 percent velasquez 37 percent for the meat so the two of them are absolutely on fire this horse's numbers fit across the board. The one concern is the mile and eight distance. The horse has won once before at a mile and an eight. Um, it was in a state bred California race over the Santa Anita turf, but the number wasn't as good. It was back in 2020. Um, so you, you're going to have to expect a little bit of improvement for this horse to be able to compete from that sense. But all the connections say that it's, it's definitely all systems go. Other horses in, in here that were interesting to me, I thought the five, Camino del Pariso, is a little bit interesting. This horse has, has uh, been an open company, hasn't faced state bred in a long time all the way back in January 26, 2019, actually, in this exact race last time he faced state bread. And he's been faring fairly well. Um, so I think that the five is a little bit of interesting. And then we mentioned the three, Alicato as well. So a horse that is taking a monster step up, ran two state bread maiden special weights, jumped up into two $20,000 optional non-winners with one allowances. And all of those were at sprint distances. So this horse has never gone further than six and a half furlongs. We're stretching out to a mile and eight today, but... That bad man, Flavian Pratt, thought it was good enough to pick up this mount. He's 39% at the meet. Uh, if you're playing Pratt or Velasquez, you're winning 50% of the races right now at Santa Anita. Tough to leave Pratt off any pick six ticket as well. I would expect this horse takes a huge step up. Don't love that 7-2 to price, though. feel like there might be a little too many question marks here to swallow 7-2. to two. If this was uh, college football and this is like an Alabama game, you're – you're paying for the name on the jersey when you've got Mark Latin, Flavian Pratt uh, on the turf like this. I, I love Alagato as well. If you go back and watch that maiden win that he had, clearly six and a half furlongs, he's just getting going, and you look at that breeding. Not often you see a cow bred who's by kitten's joy, so uh, we'll see how this horse handles the stretch out, especially to a mile and eighth. Mike thinks the horse might be able to do it. I certainly do as well. For all of our thoughts on the pick six, check out the Magic Mike Show. We're covering races seven through ten, the late pick four sequence at Sandy Anita Park on Saturday, January 15th, so we'll get you covered. Five of the six legs, we've got you covered. Just to figure out how you want to play the fifth race to open or maybe smash the all button just to be safe there. Head over to racenews.com where we have 
free picks for every race, every track around the country. You can go to youtube.com slash racing dudes for all our major stakes previews and recaps. You can also check all of the Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Oaks, and Pegasus World Cup trail coverage over at the YouTube channel. Hit like if you like this video. Hit subscribe if you really like it. Tell us who you think is going to win this race down in the comments below. We'll see you at the track. And there they go.